Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to go through what it looks like to integrate Rivet into uh, a local environment of another application. So as background, Rivet is the open source visual AI programming environment, and it makes programming these AI agents with large language models actually super fun. But one of the critical parts about actually creating these AI agents is they need to fit into a, the environment of another application usually. So we're gonna go through this Rivet example uh, repository where we actually have created kind of a small toy chat example of what it looks like to integrate Rivet into another application. We're actually gonna start from the very, very beginning. So uh, let's go ahead and clone this repository. You can see it's github.com slash ironclad slash rivet example. And if we come here and adjust git clone, and we're cloning the rivet example, I'll cd into there. Uh, and if you just look at the instructions, step one, clone the repository, then npm install. Uh, and then we have to export the uh, our OpenAI API key. I've already done that so that <laughs> I don't expose my API key by accident. Uh, and then we just run npm start. Cool. And just like that, uh, we have our awesome chat application. Hi there, how can I help you today? Well, what can you help with? So our chat application is able to do a few things right now. Uh, it can do calculations with a calculator, play a game of 24, uh, and just chat with us in general. Uh, so let's take a look at actually what this chat bot looks like. So, you know, open up Rivet, and I'm gonna navigate to my Rivet example project. And in the repository folder, there's this chat.rivet project over here. And if I open it up, I can see the four graphs that go into my chatbot application on the left uh, with the initial chat graph being the main graph that we, we start with. Uh, and so if we look here, we can see this graph input uh, as well as three nodes over here. Uh, and then a bunch of other things happen. When we actually chat, with the application, the chat messages are gonna go in as the input, and then they're gonna flow from left to right uh, all the way through to this graph output over here. So uh, let's go ahead and actually connect the debugger. So we've got it running. You'll notice there's this debugger URL awkwardly put at the top of the chat application. We can just copy that debugger URL into Rivet. So I just hit that dot 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 button hit remote debugger and then i copy and paste my connection url in there and just like that we're connected so i can say something like what's the weather like and if i jump back into rivet you can see the uh, graph inputs what's the weather like uh, i can even see my previous uh, messages and you can see this flowed through into our skill chooser. So based on the user's question about the weather, uh, we don't have a weather skill, so let's simply reply. Um, and then you can see it goes into this uh, match statement over here and it ran the simple reply subgraph uh, instead of the calculator or play 24 subgraph. So in answer, I apologize, but I don't have the ability to do real-time weather information. Uh, so cool, we've got the sample application running. We've got the Rivet UI connected to my local environment. Uh, let's actually see what else we can do with it. I'll go into the actual code in a second, but uh, let me show a few, few more things off about Rivet connected locally into this environment. 
Um, so obviously, if I'm interacting with the chat UI, I'm able to see what's going on in the rivet UI. Uh, so let's actually trigger a calculation, 1 plus 5 times 6. And now, as you can see, the uh, chat application, chat, uh, sorry, the calculator subgraph ran and gave us the answer 31. And if I jump into the calculator application, you can see we use uh, the chat, or we use an LLM, GPT 3.5 in this case, to extract the computation, 1 plus 1 times 6, uh, based on the context. You can see, um, what are we doing? Yeah, here we go. What is the arithmetic formula? I'm asking you to compute answer in the following format computation. Uh, and so it's actually pulling that out. But then the really cool thing is actually calling an external function here. Uh, and an external call is something that's actually defined in the environment of the local app that you're running. Uh, so let's actually jump into that code. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. And let's actually look at the structure of this app. Uh, so this is the repository uh, folder, root folder. We have the client side here under app. Um, it's not super helpful to go through that. Most, uh, all of the Rivet interaction is actually on the server side. Um, and so the first thing to notice is in package.json, you can see that we have a dependency on rivet node, uh, and that's about it. Uh, and I'll also draw your attention to source slash services slash rivet runner, because that's where most of the interactions with rivet are. You can see we've imported a bunch of things from the rivet node uh, npm package. And then we have this key function here, run rivet graph. It takes a graph ID and some graph inputs. And the very first thing it does is it actually loads a project from file, chat.rivet project. And then it runs the graph with inputs like the context of the messages. All that to say, we can also now dynamically define external functions. So I have this calculate function here that takes in the string that the LLM pulls out and then runs a pretty janky calculate expression uh, call to actually get the value as a number and then passes it back to the rivet context to do something with. Uh, so this is really, a, this external functions uh, idea is actually really powerful because you can really dynamically express these functions, uh, potentially add access control so that you're not relying on the LLM to not divulge secret API keys that it should not have access to. Uh, so a pretty cool way to have your agent interact directly with your application. It's also nice because since we dynamically load the project from file every time, as we're running this locally, we can actually save changes to this and see them play out in real time. Uh, as an example of this, we have this kind of like janky play 24 <laughs> uh, subgraph, which has the LLM try to play the game of 24, where we give it four numbers. And it's going to try to come up with an arithmetic operation that creates the number 24. Uh, we chose this as an example because it's really bad at this game. At least 3.5 is pretty bad at this game. So that is not 24. Uh, so let's actually show how we can alter the graph dynamically to uh, try to fix this or try to make the chatbot better at playing the game of 24. Well, the first thing to notice is actually we're putting chat messages in here. You can see we said 5516 most recently. Um, and then it's like running the graph to completion. It's kind of annoying that we have to keep going back to this UI every time we want to do that. Uh, and it'd be really nice if we could just hit this run button. Well, turns out we can hit just hit that run button. There we go. It's it's running that. And what it's doing is you can actually define kind of like static variables. So I defined this 5, 5, 
one six uh, chat message as a default value on the graph input. Uh, and the main reason I did this uh, is so that I could hit this run button over and over and iterate within the context of the Rivet UI, rather than have to jump back into the chat uh, interface of our application. So cool, now I can just focus in on this particular subgraph and try to improve our chatbot's capabilities at playing the game of 24. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna try, um, I'm gonna try to do some prompt engineering. So here's the main prompt. We say, here are some numbers. We kind of insert the numbers and we say, uh, your task is to do this. Uh, first, I'm gonna try to give it chain of thought reasoning. So I'm gonna say first, explain your reasoning. Cool, and now I'll hit save, project saved. And again, I'll hit run. And uh, now if we go through this, cool. It's actually trying out multiple solutions now. And it's coming out with a very, very confused set of things. Uh, that's, that's really not an answer. Uh, so that's not great. Uh, well, let's, let's try something slightly different. Let's actually ask, let's actually alter uh, this. Instead of using 3.5 Turbo, let us use GPT-4. Let's see if that does any better. Six times five minus five plus one. Okay, uh, well, maybe I don't wanna actually do the math here to figure out if it got that right. So let's actually extract that answer and put it into that calculate function. So to do that, I'm gonna add an extract with regex node so that I can get that kind of answer six times five minus five plus one and pass it into my external call. So answer, and then a capture group and dot star. And then I'm going to drag this response as the input to the regex node. And that capture group should come out as output one. So let's put that into the external call. And note here, I'm just typing because uh, I know the name of the node that I want. Pass it in there and have it do the calculate function name. All right, again, I have to hit save. Let's run. All right, GPT-4 is trying. And cool, so close yet so far. Not the number 24, but the number 26. Um, so I could continue to iterate here, uh, but I think we can stop for now uh, for this tutorial because what we've covered just once again, now what we've covered here is downloading the Rivet example project, getting it set up, uh, NPM installing it, giving it the open AI key it needs, uh, and then launching it and connecting it to the Rivet debugger. And then on top of that, we've looked at how external calls are actually uh, dynamically defined in the context of the locally running environment. Uh, and then we did a little bit of prompt engineering and graph tweaking uh, to try to get uh, this chatbot to do a slightly better job at playing the game of 24. Uh, and yeah. Oh, I think it actually got it this time. <laughs> Good job, GPT-4. So hopefully this helped. Uh, I'll do some more tutorials uh, in a couple of days that kind of go into maybe how you would set up some of the other bits of this project from scratch, uh, but excited to see what you all do with Rivet. Thank you.